But I like what you, you touched on it briefly there about like, you're going to die someday. So you want to have these stories that, that you have to tell. And I think, yeah, that's something that, that I think about often too. And I think when you think about like, I, I was listening to this in, in a book actually the other day, it was called The Comfort Crisis. So it's about this guy who- Oh, and that's a great title of the book. Yeah. <laughs> to so, yeah. So what he does, this guy, he's- does the, this massive challenge where he pretty much goes into the forest with two of his hunting friends with like like some snacks and like heaps of like luggage and tents and whatever and their their mission is just to go out there and like hunt like an animal i think it's i think right. it a carrot i don't really know what that is i'm guessing it's like similar to a deer but everything's similar to a deer yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like no way i get this thing and then and bring it back and eat, eat that is like that pretty much their sole source of food and then and then come back after a month and a very interesting book but one of the things he was saying was these cultures that i think that's actually a country in I think they have like quite a low like wealth to GDP kind of index, but they're one of the happiest countries in the world. And one of the theories around the reason why is because yep. they get mm. taught about this idea of death, primary school, high oh, school, yeah. that they yeah. just get reminded that you're going to die. So like some yep. people, this particular country, he was saying they really focus on it. So they have a plan for where they want to die, what's it going to look like. And they've really considered it in great depth. Wow. Whereas... So some people maybe in the Western world get right to the end and then they're like, oh, that's what happened. I've ended up here. And so I think it's so Strikes. key to Accord. consider that because I think whether it's what career you're going to choose, who are you going to seek out, what kind of things you could, what are you going to spend your time doing? If you reflect on that, you're plan out your life and you're going to die someday, that there is actually some kind of urgency to doing these things. They're not just going to happen themselves. So I think that brings a lot of clarity and especially what you're saying about like the, um, extrinsic and intrinsic motivations I, I like i think some of the extrinsic ones might start to fade away a little bit when you realize death strips them back yeah death strips them back completely my, i don't know if you've heard this but my favorite question is what would you do if you had five years to live what would you do differently like how would you live differently it's mm. my favorite question not everyone always asks if you had a day to live yeah okay obviously i'd say hi mm. to james tell my mama lover yeah go to the beach have a party like yeah. it's too easy mm. but when it's five years you still got like finances to manage and ration out over that time and but it's so close you can't ignore it mm. too and you got time to do something like meaningful that'll probably impact things after you're gone because you'll be very conscious of the fact that you're going to be gone mm. and it sounds a little morbid but I, I think it's actually the opposite. I think it's morbid to what we do in the West is put death out of the picture mm. and deny it exists. We live, most people are living as if they're never going to die. Mm. That's, that's like when I look around, most people in the West living as if they're never going to die. Their behavior doesn't make sense to me considering that they'll be dead one day, which is struggling for 10 years just to get a, a mortgage. If that's, an, if that's an eighth of your life or a 10th of your life mm. and that was the only thing you got towards in that time at expense of like everything else that's good about life. But that five year question, like everyone I've asked, like it just strips back all the extrinsic stuff because mm. you're not worried about how people are going to look at you. Everything about human nature is about constraining attention to something. That's like, we have finite attention. And so why so many people struggle, even though this is logical, is that in the world we're in, the environment we're in like all the shiny objects and everything, just, it sucks our attention into that. In the same way, social media will always direct your attention to what's in your feed, even though I don't want to just be scrolling my phone right now. Mm. So there's, we don't have that discipline is like really hard. If you want to apply it to everything you're looking at all the time, it's again, like, oh no, 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 remind myself, don't think about that. Don't think about that. And so obviously death is just like everything else, which is, it constrains your focus, but it probably constrains your focus better because it's the reality mm. death is the reality that we'll have to face at some point. Yeah. You can't lie about that. Mm. And anything contrary is actually the big kind of fluff ball. Like that's like the distraction. So yeah, I think that I've heard that sort of story about the different cultures that do actually centralize it and normalize it mm. and, and make it like, yeah, okay, this is the constraint. These are the constraints. So what are you going to do? And it just changes everything. That question for me just changes everything. Mm -hmm. And this podcast geared towards career and probably when we talked about networking today, it absolutely impacts how you think about those things. It absolutely impacts how you think about those things. 
because you think about, oh, I'm not going to focus on doing everything in a transactional way. If I'll, if I won't be here in five years, I, I want to, you want to, you want that journey to like be meaningful and you want it to like be worthwhile, good relationships that you work with. And you don't have also, you don't have time for people who are not that. Yeah. Two, oh, I just want to hang out this person cause they can get me this or that. And you don't have time for that cause you're gone in five years. So I, I try to remind myself of that question, like as often as possible, cause it is a massive release. Mm. It's just a massive release. Even thinking about it again now, thank you for prompting me, <laughs> like unintentionally. But everything I got, like launching a book at the moment, and all these things, and I just right now, I just it's calming. It's it's so fascinating, and yeah, it's definitely like missing from Western culture in a big way. We don't. It's it's not normally in the career guidance books and all that sort of stuff, and high school and yeah. But I, I have a feeling like in the coming decades, it it might because. Things are going to change so much with technology and the world and the digital world and crypto and all these things. Just going to shift things around so much. Flying cars and yeah, that's you know, coming, mm. and, and and it's coming, and so that's going to force us to rethink the way we do a lot of things. So it'll be fascinating to see it, it, how big those changes might be. Yeah, yeah, no, totally, totally. Yeah, I think that's I think that's super cool. 